everyone, it's Darby with RejoiceAndCreate.com and this is the project I'd like to share with you today. Isn't this fun? It would make a wonderful gift box for a small gift or some goodies for someone at Christmas time. And it's not your traditional Christmas colors. I used the Foil Frenzy paper set, which is a craft cardstock background with foiling of different colors. And it has, this one's the Berry Burst Foil, but they also have Lemon Eye Twist Foil, Soft Sky, and Tangerine Tango. And it just looks so shiny and beautiful. It would make a great packaging for under the tree or for on the table if you want to give somebody some goodies. Um, it was inspired by something my mother sent me. She sent me this Ghirardelli chocolate package because she thought it was fun and she thought I would like it. And I certainly did. Of course, it did come empty, but my mother does know I have absolutely no willpower for chocolate. So thank, thank you, Mom, for watching out for me. Otherwise, the entire package would have been uh, consumed before the project was done. Um, so let me show you how I made it. All right, so we'll need a piece of cardstock, and I'm using the Foil Frenzy because it's a little bit heavier designer series paper. It works perfectly for this uh, type of present. Um, it's 10 inches wide by 10 and a half inches long, and the 10 inch side is actually the width of the cracker. So if you want a design to go across it, that's the 10 inch side. You'll also need for the mat, uh, I'm using Soft Sky cardstock. And it's three and a quarter inches by two and three quarters of an inch. So three and one quarter by two and three quarters. And for the sentiment layer, I'll use a piece of berry vanilla cardstock that's three inches by two and a half inches. All right, so we'll go ahead and start with the box itself. And let me get the scoreboard out there. All right, we're going to start with the 10 inch side on top. And I hope that's not reflecting too too uh, much to obscure the view. So we'll start with the 10 inch side and we're going to score it at two inches, three and a quarter inches, six and three quarters of an inch, and eight inches. Okay, so that's two inches, three and a quarter inches, six and three quarters of an inch and eight inches. All right, so turn it to the 10 and a half inch side and we're going to score it all the way at two inches, five inches, seven inches, and 10 inches. All right, now we're also going to do a couple of part scores and we're going to score it just down to this first score line that crosses across. It's at the two inch score line and you'll score that at one inch. Remember just down to that two inch score line and at six inches. Okay, now you're going to flip it over and score the exact same partial score. So we'll go right to that first score line, which is the two inches. And we're going to score at the one inch mark down to that two in, to the score line and at the six inch mark down to that score line. All right. I'll get that out of our way. All right, so we'll go ahead and fold and burnish all of our score lines, except the partial ones. You don't need to do the partial ones yet. Okay, so that little half inch edge down there is going to be our glue line and we're going to go ahead and glue it together. And it makes kind of a rectangular box. So go ahead and use Fast Fuse on this one or Tear and Tape. You want something that's going to be very strong and hold it, especially with the foil. Because sometimes the other um, adhesives won't hold the foil on the paper. All right, and because this is even sided, if you keep that one down and just go ahead and press it. It should line up pretty well. Okay. All right, so there we go. All right, now this is probably the most tricky part, and it's really not that tricky, but we have to create those little cut-ins that will make the box into what looks like a cracker. So 
what I did was on from each end, but we'll start on this one right end, you have that first score line and then you have a second score line. On that first score line, right up from the fold line, we're going to make a little dot that's three quarters of an inch from that fold line. So I'm going to put my one inch right there and let's see, half, three quarters of an inch up, just make a tiny dot on there. Maybe a little bit bigger dot. Okay, fold it again, do the same thing to this one. Do it again and uh, at three quarters of an inch, just up. And the last one on this side, three quarters of an inch and up. Now just take a good pair of scissors. And what we're going to do is from this score line right at the fold, we're going to cut up to where we marked. So we're going to make a half of a triangle out this way. So right from the score line, right up to that mark that we made. Okay, now just fold that over on the score line. It just gives you an idea of where to cut from the other side so it looks somewhat even. And then just cut from that side up to the mark. Okay, I didn't cut that all the way. There we go. All right, so this is what it gives us. It gives us that open triangle. It's gonna help us pinch that end in to make the cracker. And go ahead and do that for the rest of them. Just cut it from that score line up to that mark that you made. Fold it over and cut from the other side up to that mark. It really goes fast once you get going. Again, I just put my scissors right there on that score line. And where was Mark on that one? Okay, there it is. The paper is so shiny and nice, but sometimes it plays with my eyes. There we go. And one more on this side. Fold it over just so you know where to start your cut on this side. And cut on it. Alright, now you do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so this is what we have with all the triangles cut out. And as you can see, when you scooch it in like this, and you can go ahead and actually press those down. See, I'm pressing that down just like you would for the top of a bag. It makes just a wonderful cracker shape. All right, we'll go ahead and do that to the other side too. Just press those two sides in a little bit. And you have your you have the little cracker. All right, so let me go ahead and stamp the sentiment. And I have the matte layer, which is three and a quarter by two and three quarters, and I'm using Soft Sky for this one. And I have the sentiment layer, which is very vanilla, and it's three inches by two and a half. And in order to help me stamp my image in the same place every time, I'm going to use the Stampin' Up! jig. And this is something that Stampin' Up! does sell. Um, I did purchase mine before I joined Stampin' Up!, so it's purple, but uh, Stampin' Up! does sell this, and it's a, it's a really nice way to line up your image every time. So what it is, is it comes with this jig and it comes with an imaging sheet. And in order to line up your image, take the corner, one of the corners of your imaging sheet and butt it up against the inside corner of the top of the jig. All right, and you put that down on the, on the paper or on your surface and butt that up. Now go ahead and ink up your stamp set. And this works well with wood mount blocks as well as the clear mount blocks. And stamp it up, ink it up and butt that corner of your block into that same corner that you butted up the imaging sheet and stamp it down. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect image, it's just there to help you 
um, see where your image is so you can arrange it properly on the um, cardstock. So what I do now is I'm going to put my cardstock down, but I think I'll just put a little touch of snail on the back just so it stays in place and it doesn't move around on me. And I'm also going to line it up even with one of the uh, score lines. That's not necessary, actually. The stamp of a jig will help you line up no matter which way you go, but that kind of just helps me make sure I'm still in the camera. So take your imaging sheet and line that image that you stamped right where you want it onto your uh, cardstock or your paper, whatever you're stamping on. Then take your, holding that down, take your jig and line up that same corner with the corner of your imaging sheet. So go ahead, just butt that right up, make sure you're in there. And then go ahead and take that out of the way. Now all you have to do is go ahead and ink up your Im image before, ink up your stamp again. Okay, and line up that same corner into the jig and then just slide it down gently and press it down. And that helps you line it up in the exact same, in the exact place that you want it onto your uh, cardstock sheet. And it's a very nice way to do it. If you didn't get a perfect image, as long as things are sitting there, you can just go back and do it again. And it lines it up in the same place again. So it's one way that can help you line up your images on your cardstock or your sentiments on your paper. All right, so let's go ahead and use some soft sky and I'm going to stamp the uh, another image. And just for a little bit of sparkle, I'm going to add some of the glitter enamel dots. And now these glitter enamel dots come in Dapper Denim, Crushed Curry, Berry Burst, and Old Olive. And I'm using them a lot more than I thought I would because I love the ombre colors that they have on there. And even though we didn't use the Dapper Denim, I'm going to go ahead and use these uh, glitter dots. I'm going to scatter a few around within the sparkles because the blues and the sparkling makes it look very festive together. And I like the ombre effect of it. All right, so let's go ahead and put that onto our mat. Of course, I probably could have put the glitter dots on after I put it on the mat. Might have made it a little easier, but that's all right. And we're going to pop that up on our cracker with some dimensionals. So let's bring in our cracker. And let's see, know where my seam is. My seam's right there, so that's the back. So let's go ahead and put this onto the front of the cracker. All right, I've got some of the Bermuda Bay ribbon to match the sentiment, and this is the mini chevron ribbon. And it's probably just a little bit more than eight inches. And we'll go ahead and tie this one on the side. And I'm just going to tie it in a knot. All right. And let me go ahead <clears throat> and let me go ahead and just snip those to make the ends a little bit prettier. All right, and now is where you want to go ahead and fill it. And as I mentioned, you might want to use some tissue paper if it's something small and might come out of that uh, little opening in there, or use one of the three by six cellophane bags to put your uh, goodies in, and then go ahead and tie up the other end. Neaten up that one a little bit. There we go. All right, so how do you like it? Let me bring the other one back in. I love the colors. That foil frenzy paper is just so festive and it makes a really nice cracker. And as I said, these are really nice size. 
So I hope you enjoyed the project today. It is a lot of fun and it would be a really festive way to gift a present or some goodies to someone. And the lights of the Christmas tree would certainly sparkle off of the foil on the Foil Frenzy Designer Series paper. I hope you enjoyed the video today. And if you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It certainly encourages me to do more. And if you want to subscribe, then you can be notified when I add new videos to my channel. And you're more than welcome to stop by RejoiceAndCreate.com to see this project and the others I've created. So I hope you give it a try. And until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye!